it is. Welcome to the Death Cage. This is the Crack Guitars Vlog. Today we're talking about the Boyd. Now if you watched the second Apocalypse video, you heard this guitar. Second was a song I wrote way back when, but this video is not about the history of that song. It's about this guitar, because I recorded that song as a demo for this. And there will be a bonus tape to follow with just recordings from this guitar. Alright, let's talk about the build. I have a love-hate relationship with this guitar. My friend Boyd brought this guitar to me. Now I've worked on several guitars for him. He's familiar with the quality of my work. He said, hey, I've got this old guitar in my closet. You want to see what you can do with it? And I said, sure. You see, that's where I messed up. Many a days I wished I'd have just said no. Because this guitar was a pain in my... This is one of those piece of junk guitars you find at a yard sale for five bucks. They're not meant to be serious instruments and there's no reason to repair one. If Boyd had not told me the story behind this guitar, I would not have persevered on this project. The story goes, when he was a young man, Boyd's first wife bought him this guitar as a Christmas present. But at the time, they were dirt poor and this guitar that didn't even have a brand name on the headstock was all she could afford. I can relate to that because my first guitar was a piece of junk Tysco. It belonged to my dad and has immense sentimental value. But it became obsolete as soon as I bought my second guitar. Rather than set it in a corner to collect dust, I chose to put hour upon hour of work into repairing it and making it better than it was brand new. So I understand why Boyd wanted this guitar playable again. And the journey began. Now let me say this. I am not a trained luthier, nor do I sell my services as such. Simply put, I live in a small town and there's just no one around that works on guitars. So I offer my skills as a local alternative to driving an hour or more to the nearest guitar repair shop. But not being a professional luthier, the way I went about repairing this guitar may be a bit unorthodox. So when I got this guitar, it was in bad shape. The top and the back were both separating from the sides. The top looked like Surf City USA. It had so many waves running through it, probably from some kind of water damage. The neck had a horseshoe shaped dip in it. The bridge was not glued to the body. The saddle looked like a piece of plastic out of a model car kit. The body was cracked all over and the wood was very frail. Broken braces and a separating neck joint were my first concern. I took a knife, stuck it in one of the gaps between the top and the side, and completely removed the top and the back from the guitar. Then set about gluing all the damaged braces. I then added some additional braces in an attempt to straighten the top. I used scrap pieces of wood cut to length and began gluing them in, starting from the neck joint and working my way across. At one point, while clamping a brace, the neck joint actually came loose from the body, so more glue. At this point, there's probably more glue than wood on this guitar. Once all the braces were in, it was time to reattach the top to the sides, but I chose not to attach the back yet. Boyd wanted me to make this an acoustic electric. I ordered a preamp, piezo pickup, body mic transducer, and magnetic sound hole pickup, which I chose to admit later to simplify the wiring. This guitar has a tiny sound hole though. I knew I would never get my big old hand in there. By leaving the back off, it would give me easy access to all the components I needed to install. And this leads me to the most unorthodox thing I did with this guitar. So despite the fact that there's a sticker, saying this guitar has a steel reinforced neck, there's no truss rod. The dip in the neck combined with the extremely tall bridge and general shoddy construction made the action of this guitar all but unplayable. So how to lower the action of a guitar that has no truss rod, a set neck, and a bridge that cannot be lowered because you have to maintain the proper brake angle to the tailpiece? 
The solution I came up with was this. I drilled a hole through the body where the strap button goes. I stuck a guitar string through and attached it to the base of the neck with a screw. I then fabricated a block with a guitar tuner in it and then attached it to the other end of the string on the outside of the body. By tightening the string, it would squeeze the body, pulling the neck downward and lowering the action, as well as it allowed me to string up the guitar without the support of the back. So for the next few months, this string was all the internal support this guitar had. I purchased the compensated saddle to replace the old junky one, only to find it didn't fit in the old bridge. Rather than retrofit the old bridge, I just bought a new one. But the new one wasn't tall enough. To fix this, I cut a piece of single ply in the exact shape of the bridge and glued it all together and to the body, setting the proper intonation in the process. Time for electronics. I cut a hole for the preamp and began wiring. I put a piezo pickup under the saddle and a transducer pickup on the inside. I braced the transducer pickup with a piece of wood to squeeze it tight to the body and ensure good vibrational transfer. I wired both pickups to an M500K blend balance pot and then routed it all out of the body through a combo input jack strap button using shielded wire to cut down on interference. And then it was finally time to glue the back back on. Of course, by squeezing the body, the shape of the guitar was altered slightly. So I filled the gaps with quick wood epoxy, followed by a pass with my router and a flushing bit to remove the excess. Then we stripped it down and ready for paint. I wanted to save some of the original details to keep it recognizable as the same guitar. I masked off the steel reinforced neck sticker, even though it's a bold faced lie. I've never seen a guitar with a wooden nut before, so I wanted to keep it, and that's why I didn't replace it with Tusk. I wanted to keep the original fretboard as well as the original finish on the new bridge. Everything else got hit with a coat of flat black. Now Boyd had a vision for this guitar. He said that he wanted a black guitar with a red neck, and he left the rest up to me. So the neck got hit with a coat of Georgia Clay Red, and then I blended it into the black of the body. The headstock pick guard and faux binding got a coat of testers ruby red metallic flake to give this beauty some sparkle and before clear coat there was one final touch to be added i had my wife because she's got way prettier handwriting than me personalize this guitar with the only name that was ever meant to go on this headstock a little wire brushing on the tailpiece and she was almost ready to play but Remember that dip in the neck and lack thereof a truss rod? Well, despite all my hard work, this guitar was still unplayable. Every note between the 4th and 14th fret was either buzzing or not sounding at all. Now what to do? I had no way of raising the fretboard, so the only option I saw was lower the frets. I took my fret file and filed, and filed, and filed, and filed, until in spite of the dip in the neck, all the frets were level. The poor 13th fret ended up being right at the apex of the arc where I bent the neck downward, and as a result, it got filed down to almost nothing. There wasn't even enough left to put a proper crown on it. But finally, the Boyd guitar was fully playable. So we're going to play a little bit on the Boyd. I'm going to let you hear it acoustically. Then I'm going to plug it in and let you hear the different pickups and different settings of the preamp. That was acoustic. Now we're plugged in and we're all the way forward, which is just the piezo pickup under the saddle.
Now we're going to roll the knob all the way back where we have just the body mic pickup active. And anywhere in between on the blend knob gives you a mix of both pickups. And now we're going to play with the preamp a little bit. And that's the Boyd. I'm sure guitar builders are shaking their head right now at some of my techniques, but I'm proud of the work I did on this. And I'm proud to give my friend Boyd back a piece of functional memorabilia. If you've been following this build on my Crack Guitars Facebook page, I haven't posted any updates for a while intentionally because I wanted to surprise Boyd with the final product. What do you think? Ha <laughs> ha, that looks cool. <laughs> That's pretty good. You got to plug it in, it's going to sound a lot better. Yeah. Man, you've done a lot of work. <laughs> I did the best to fix all the gaps and everything that was broken on it. <laughs> that, you had a big job. <laughs> I tell you, this thing was a piece of trash. <laughs> Well, my first guitar got burned up in a fire, but uh, don't tell me you still got the pieces, and I ain't, cause I ain't putting it back together. No, they couldn't hardly <laughs> dig nothing much out of the ashes. <laughs> yeah, that ain't gonna be your best guitar, but it'll be. No, it ain't my best, but mm -hmm. I think it's cool that you can rebuild a thing like that mm -hmm. from something that didn't even have a brand name. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does now. It's yours. <laughs> yeah. That looks good. That looks good on there. That's just sweet. I love this thing. <laughs> Alright. Well, I hope you all enjoyed your stay here in the death cage. Thanks for watching. As always, have a good one and solidarity.